Welcome to this school assembly. I'm Father Joe and this is my church, St Mary of St Alban, Teddington. I'm hoping this assembly is going out on Tuesday the 26th of January, but I'm recording it on Sunday, the Sunday before. And the exciting thing is, it's snowing outside, so I hope you've had lots of fun in the snow. Let's begin our assembly with our greeting. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now we light our three candles as we normally do at school and we pray first for the world and we pray especially for all those suffering with COVID that they will recover. We pray for our families and friends and praying for any going through a hard time at the moment. And we pray for ourselves that uh, as we have to continue to stay uh, at home, uh, we will still try and do our best. So I've wonder, I wonder whether you've said the words, it's not fair in the last few days. I know I have sometimes when uh, things get difficult and I know my teenage children uh, still say it even though they claim to be quite grown up. It's not fair is a very common complaint. I'm going to tell you a story this morning about a family, a family which included someone who said it's not fair. I'm going to kneel down and use uh, these stacking cups, which I don't think I've shown you before. So I'm going to introduce you to a stacking cup story. Once upon a time, there was a father who had two sons. The older son was hardworking and wanted to please his father. He did everything that his father asked him to do, even digging up the potatoes. The younger son had his own plans. The father was a patient man, a generous man. He was also very rich. One day, the older son was out in the fields working. The younger son went to his father and said, I am bored working on your farm. I want to go and explore the world. I want my share of your money. I don't want to wait till you die. I want it now, while I am young enough to enjoy it. So, sadly, the father gave the younger son his share of the money. The younger son packed his bag and left on his journey to a faraway country. He visited strange lands. He saw some very strange people. He tasted strange food. He spent lots of money. While his older brother was at home, at home working on the farm, the younger son made many friends. Drinking friends and dancing friends. He had a wild time and he spent lots of money. But after a while, there was no money left. Then there were no friends left either. They all walked away and left him alone. Then there was a famine and there was no food left either. First the younger son became hungry, then he became very hungry. He became so hungry that he thought that he had probably better get a job. He asked everyone he met for a job, but the only job that he could get was looking after some pigs. He was so hungry, he would have been glad to eat the pigs' food but no one gave him anything. He was very miserable and all alone. 
Finally, he came to his senses and said, my father's workers have plenty to eat, and here I am, starving to death. How stupid can I get? I am going home. But what will I say to dad? He thought about what he would say to his dad when he got home. Perhaps he'd say something like this. Dad, I've been wrong and I'm sorry. I've disappointed you and God. I don't deserve to be called your son, but I need to eat. Could I come home and just be one of your farm workers? The younger son picked up his bags and started on the long journey home to his father. What had the father been doing all this time? As he sat on the front porch, not a day had gone by without him looking down the road for his son. The father loved his son despite being treated so badly by him. This day he did the same thing. He sat and waited, looked down the road and hoped. So when the younger son was still a long way off, his father saw him coming, leapt to his feet and ran to meet him. The son started his little speech. Dad, it's like this. I've been wrong. I've disappointed you in God. I don't deserve to be called your son. But his dad brought his son a new robe to wear, calling his servants out with a new robe. A ring for his finger and new sandals for his feet. Best of all, he threw a party to celebrate his son coming home. Yay! Party, party time. What about the older son? Remember him? What was he like? Was he happy about the party? <laughs> he was very unhappy. He stayed outside. He didn't go to the house and join the party. So his father went outside to him. It's not fair, Dad, he said to his father. I've always worked really hard for you and done the right thing. My brother was stupid and did the wrong thing and you're throwing a party for him. You never even gave me a cake to share with my friends. Was it fair? It was very hard for the older bro brother to understand how much his father loved and forgave his younger brother. He was jealous and confused. But his father didn't love one son more than the other. The father told him, told his older son, you are always here with me and everything I have is yours. I hope you enjoyed that stacking, stuck, stacking, uh, stacking cup story. And I wonder whether you'd like to have a chat with any brothers and sisters, mums and dads or grandmothers or whoever you're watching this with. And ask each other, what do you think about the younger son's behaviour? What did you think about the way he behaved to his father? What do you think about the elder son? Was he treated fairly? Why was the father so happy to see the younger son? And how did the father explain his actions to his elder son? Perhaps you'd like to pause and have a chat with your family about this.
let's remember that it was Jesus who told this story, who made up this story. He told this story because he wanted to show people what God was like. God was like, he said, this father, who, no matter how badly we might hurt him, how badly we might treat him, he always welcomes us back. He's always longing for us to return to him like the younger son. But he's also always there for the elder son. And the thing is, life just isn't fair a lot of the time. But we always have a God who looks out for us, a God who is wanting to comfort us and to embrace us. And so sometimes we just have to turn to him, say a prayer, and remember all the things that we do have, that we can say thank you for, that we are lucky enough to have and to share. I've got a poem here that I want to read for you. It's called, Is It Fair? Split and divide, we learn how to share. Equal parts can make things fair. Everyone should have the same. So what is wrong and who's to blame? Some have nothing, some have more, ending in conflict, grief and war. So many things are there to share, but pleasing all is very rare. Sharing the earth, the ski, the sky, the sea, some are trapped while some are free. We share our thoughts, our hopes, our dreams, our laughter, jokes and future schemes. There are highs and lows in daily life, joy and pain and trials and strife. It's fair we share our home, our pay and love for others day by day. Sometimes we're forced to share the pain of those we'll never see again. And when at times life's hard to bear, there's a moment we can share a prayer. When you look at life, is it really fair? Look harder. What could you share? Let's finish with a prayer. Maybe you'd like to put your hands together and keep quiet for a moment. Let us thank God for all the beauty of nature that we can all share, especially the snow. We pray for the people in countries where there is famine and war. Let us hope that the world will become a fairer place. Help us to be thoughtful and caring towards others this day and always. And teach us to forgive. Teach us to be fair. And teach us to share. Amen. And I hope you go on to have a very good day today. Goodbye.